cheap and cheerful. Today, we're going to look at power banks. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, power banks are like electronic crack. You get one, you need a slightly bigger one. You get a slightly bigger one, you need an even bigger one. You get an even bigger one, you get an even bigger one. But what if the bigger one is not big enough? What if you want to make your own power bank? Now, people would have seen, uh, I'll put it up here, where you can have this DIY power bank situation. You use some 18650s, uh, like, like these, and you put about 10 or 12 or something in the pack and you can make your own and it would be pretty much better than any other power bank you could buy except I ended up deleting that video because I became unsure about the science around it everyone was saying no not everyone a small number of people were saying well those batteries don't have any kind of balancing yeah there's no there's no balancing between the cells and despite what, what my research told me, I thought, better safe than sorry, let's get rid of it. Well, I've done some more research, and I've come to the conclusion that given these batteries are in parallel, anywhere you look, it'll tell you, you do not need balancing in that kind of situation. The cells essentially balance themselves because they're all connected. It's just one great big battery. So I went out on the market, and I found this. Thank you. The latest and greatest model that they've got. Now, as you can see on the inside, when I open this bloody thing, on the inside, it takes an insane amount of batteries. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 18, 650 batteries. And if you, if you put some decent, 18650s in there, 72,000 milliamp hours. Actual 72,000 milliamp hours. Not these BS batteries saying they got 100,000 or 50,000. Even this one that says it's got 20,000, uh, I am very suspicious of that. Because when you look at it, how many of these are going to be in there? Let's say it's maybe, maybe four. Unless it's using like a, like a pouch cell. Could be. I need to open this up one day, actually. Um, yeah, doubts. But when you build your own, you know exactly how much you got, and it does last a lot longer than you'd expect. And of course, you've got little bonuses, like you've got this pretty decent LED uh, light on the side. It'd be nice if it was a, a cob or something like that. you got another little one that's just built into the, uh, the chip here. Uh, you charge it via the Type-C import, you've got micro USB, you've got Apple Lightning, and you've got a bunch of, uh, a bunch of ports on here that can do or quick charge, all that sort of stuff. So you can charge your phone really quick with one of these. But what if this isn't big enough? Well, thankfully our friends at AliExpress have the answer. Is that showing my... Yeah, let's do that again. Thankfully, our friends at AliExpress have the answer. So this, this holds a little bit more. <laughs> oh my god. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 18, 650 batteries. <laughs> Look at it. Uh, that is something just just magnificent about that. I love it. So you get some decent at N650 batteries and you will have up to I can't barely read it myself. It's a hundred yeah, it's a hundred thousand milliamps. We can do some calculations. Um, but let's say uh, you've got the worst cells possible. They've got 1,500 milliamps each times uh, times 32. You'll get this number. Or what about if you got really nice cells? They got you know 3,500 milliamp hours each. You get this number. 
or you know there are some batteries out there that'll do even more but you know you'd be spending some serious cash typically the way you do this though is you get some batteries out of old equipment so for example some uh, old power tool batteries laptop batteries this kind of thing because you know they're not going to be fake like most of the many of the ones you buy online you know they work um, but Obviously, you do not do this unless you're confident with electronics. Do not play with any 64, 650 batteries unless you know what you're doing. But I'm thinking most of the audience of these videos do, or they just like to watch this stuff. However, you're going to need a lot of batteries, right? That is, that's a lot of batteries. So, a lot of batteries. A lot, a lot of batteries. I guess all there is to do now is to put it together. What are these first? These are Samsung ICR 18650 26J. These are not great batteries, but they're decent and they were cheap. They came out of an old a UPS battery backup or um, something like that. Now, eBay doesn't sell individual 18650s, so they take down anybody who lists them. You know, people get around that by listing the whole entire battery from a laptop, from whatever it is, and you, you just have to rip it apart, open it up, get the batteries out. Do not do this if you are not confident with electronics. Just go out to your uh, big box store and, and get a power bank. This is for people who like to tinker and play around a bit. Let's get started. So, the most important thing when putting this together is obviously making sure your batteries are all in the right position. You can see, uh, obviously, this end's gonna be the positive, but one good indicator when it's already in is you got a little tab, a little, little line here. So you know that's the positive side, yeah? And the blank side is the negative case you get paranoid however if you were to put one in the wrong way and there were already several in there I think you'd know about it pretty quickly with the uh, sparks and the flashing and the flames and the napalm and all that sort of thing anyway we need to concentrate when we're doing this so yeah let's go negative along the springs on the bottom put them in Every now and then to take a good look in and make sure it's uh, definitely all the right in the right spot. This is getting heavy. All right, so the last six batteries I had to pull from my collection of randoms, they all have about 2,000 and 2,500 uh, milliamps in them. Ideally, you don't want to mix cells, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll give it a shot. Wait. We're missing battery? Missing battery. One moment, please. All right, here it is 32 batteries. This weighs a lot. In fact, let's find out exactly how much it weighs. Hopefully it's not too much for this little thing. Oh, well, at least it's triple A's. One moment, please. Okay, stay, really? Come on. Okay. All right. So, 1.72 kilograms, which is roughly this many burgers. All right. Now, obviously we have to put the top on it. It comes with these tiny ass little screws and it can be a little bit frustrating to get on properly. There we go. 
All right, and they supply terrible little screwdriver. The key with these things is in order to get an accurate measurement of the percentage left, put all your batteries in, charge it up as much as possible until it's at 100, then discharge it, drain it as much as you can. So get it right down to zero and then charge it again and then you'll be roughly um, you'll be roughly correct in terms of percentage battery remaining. Also, ensure when you put your batteries in that they're all the same voltage. You do not want to put a battery in that's fully charged and a battery in that's half charged or worse, very low charge, because that full charge battery will immediately start dumping everything it's got into the other battery. Or even worse, if you had like 31 fully charged batteries and then you chucked a non-charged battery in there, you'd have 31 fully charged batteries dumping everything they've got into that other one. It would heat up and potentially very bad things would happen, or at minimum you're going to wreck your cell. So it's reset to zero. That's a good thing. We need to now put it on charge. It only charges via the Type-C port. Put on charge up to 100. Fully discharge it. You're going to have to charge, find everything you've got in your house that's powered by USB, plug it in in order to drain this thing, and it's going to take a while to drain. Charge it back up again to 100%, and then you're good to go. Now, this model doesn't, unfortunately, have that pretty decent light on the bottom. Um, it does have, with a double click, this at the top. There is one trick with these. Uh, it won't put out power until you charge it. So if you put all your fully charged batteries in, if you've charged them through a regular charger, put them in and expect to go straight off the bat, it won't work. And it's not because it's broken, it waits until it receives a charge. Yeah, so charge it up even just for five seconds, if you know your battery's fully charged. Charge it up, take your charger off, and then it will start working. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, comes with a decent leather handle, it is heavy, 1.7 kilos, but I mean, I've been using this for a while and it just charges and charges and charges anything. I've done my mobile phone, I've had lights running off it, I've had all kinds of things. Quest headset charging on it, it's just, it's unstoppable. Especially if you can't afford one of those, you know, big ass things you take with you camping, this would be a treat. Um, don't get it wet, obviously. Um, blackouts when you lose power this will just keep going and going and going um, obviously there are other ones with some options you can get one that has a wireless charger on the top um, there is another one with a different type of light I don't think it's a cob though it's something else um, but let's hope they put out a big beefy boy like this with a with a cob light a cob LED that would be kick ass anyways so that is 32 18650 DIY, genuine 100,000-milliamp power bank. Do it yourself only if you're confident with electricity and batteries and you're not going to screw it up. If you're a regular person, just go to your big box store. I hope it's been interesting. Take care. See you later. Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog.